That was the the, the um, remake by Buckley's. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh shit. Oh. Infinity War. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you. And welcome to the Comedy Cellar Nightly Program, the program we bring to you each week, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this channel on YouTube. It's very nice to see everybody again on May the 4th. Be with you. Star Wars Day, as they call it. A lot of people don't care for it. I love every minute of it. So that's the way it is. And uh, again, uh, the Comedy Cellar now open for business. I don't know. I think I read today everything's opening maybe in two weeks for, for good. Like thanks to governor Cuomo's indiscretions, everything he's opening up everything a lot quicker than, than would normally be. So it's pretty <laughs> some sweet magic. And uh, also, uh, well, we'll talk about this later. Just uh, thank you for coming to the show. Don't forget to press the donate button if you feel inclined to do so. And uh, why don't we just uh, begin with the prepared material and move on to some more announcements after that. Okay. So, Hey folks, a town in Japan used $225,000 in COVID relief funds to build the giant squid statue. The town hopes the tourists will come from around the world to see the world's stupidest town. <laughs> 13 breweries in New Jersey are offering people free beer if they show their vaccination card. So now kids need two fake ID cards. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> Finally, Bill and Melinda Gates are divorcing after 27 years of marriage. It just goes to show you can put microchips inside a vaccine, but you can't make someone love you. Hey, -oh! all right, everybody. Let me introduce my guests this evening on May the 4th. Be with you. He is the co-writer of the movies Ted, Ted 2 and A Million Ways to Die in the West. But most importantly, today, he is the executive producer and writer of the now legendary episode of Family Guy entitled Blue Harvest which kicked off their Star Wars trilogy entitled Laugh It Up, Fuzzball. Please welcome Alex Sulkin back to the show. Hello, Alex. Hey, Dave. How are you? Thank you for coming. You may know him from America's Got Talent Champions or HBO's Crashing. For the past seven years, he's also been the co-host of the Comedy Sellers Live from the Table podcast that you can hear on Sirius XM. It's Dan Natterman, everybody. May the force be with you. Oh. <laughs> Very well done. And his new single, The Tree, came out this past week, which you can purchase on iTunes as well as your favorite streaming musical places. You can find him on all social media accounts at Colin Smith Music. Please welcome Colin Smith, everybody. Hello. Hello, Hi. everybody. Thank you. Did I just read today that they are opening everything mm. on May 17th to full capacity? Or did I read incorrectly? I, I didn't. Anybody know? May 17th, I heard July 1st. but That's uh, what I heard, yeah. Well, I, I can... know. And I just looked it up before showtime and it said that everything on May 17th, everything's opening full. I don't know. They said restaurants, New York City. Yeah, I thought July 1st yeah, also. Restaurants. Yes. One day ago, New York City restaurants can reopen at full capacity on May 19th, this says. Oh, May 19th. But the May Comedy 19th. Cellar, what does that mean for a place like this? A 24 hour subway service will return on May 17th. As far as the Comedy Cellar, I don't know. 
I don't know what that, that that means for the comedy seller. Yeah, I don't. I'm curious about that myself, obviously. And uh, can we can I, we go back to the Star Wars crawl that opened the show? Of course, it's there hard was- to it's hard to follow the crawl. <laughs> it was hard for Lucas himself to follow his crawl. I thought, I thought that was the best I, part of the movie. There, there was a there was just an inconsistency in the second paragraph that I can't let stand. Oh, oh please okay. tell me what it, is. it said. You said it said the COVID virus, like hell bent on destruction, sent out millions of vaccines into the world. That's not the COVID virus didn't send out. It said the evil COVID virus sent vaccines out into the world. Is that supposed to be? Did you mean to say that? I meant to say that. But uh, when you're pointing it out now, uh, (laughs) I wish I had not said it. All right. We'll we'll do do a rewrite of that. And I tried really hard to write it the correct way. And uh oh. (laughs) You son of a bitch. Right? <laughs> the evil uh, yes. COVID virus obsessed with ruining really everything evil. has dispatched millions of vaccines. Yeah. So those two things just well, didn't line up for me. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're it right. It hit me also, but... You know, how how awesome. did you get the Star Wars theme song? Is that allowed? Can anyone just do that? No, I dare anybody to come. Wait till you see what I have prepared today. Let anybody come and, come, come and say something. That means people are watching. That'd be the best <laughs> thing that ever happened to the show. <laughs> We need you to stop. Well, you, you, you know what I thought was the best part, the most interesting and intriguing part of, of Star Wars is the fact that it took place a long time ago. That is that is the greatest opening ever. I remember seeing it when I was 13 the first time, and you're sitting there going, like, a long time ago. That's brilliant. Because <laughs> of my dad. I was like, that's the only movie we ever saw together. And I'm like, a long time ago. <laughs> and, and, then, and then you're in right yeah it's something nobody ever thought of like why couldn't it take place a long time ago the most brilliant you know Yo, opening sentence another galaxy the whole you know there's another galaxy it doesn't have to follow out and it immediately makes you think that this is going to be different than the others it's it was, a, it was a stroke of genius and brilliance and uh still to this day unbelievable but you know and and, and you know what's funny about that opening crawl is uh alec i don't know whether you know but me and dan and colin we used to do these readings of the Godfather at the Comedy Cellar before everything shut down. That's how we. That's how I met Colin actually, and we would. He would play the music, and you know, uh, Dan would play uh, Al Pacino, and I would play various <laughs> parts. And uh, what for the fourth one? I did it in five parts, and for the fourth one, I used the Star Wars crawl, uh, crawl, uh, and uh, you know, used it where the evil uh Bazzini was uh you know making arrangements and michael had to go to the 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 lost planet of uh sicily or whatever you know like something like that and then i remember that my brother-in-law goes well after that i wanted to see star wars and that's that's the problem when you when you're doing a live show and you, you should never use video to open because then people want to see more video Right, right, <laughs> and right. it takes them a while to get back in. Like, oh, right, we're seeing live. Well, you know, I, uh, I feel the same way when, like, sometimes in the middle of the comedy show, the band will start playing music, and the, and I'm like, why don't we just have music? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the problem with a lot of comics. I mean, take Todd Barry as the, my favorite example, where you know when you're at a club, especially on the road, they open up the show with music. And it's bam, 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 bam. Hey, welcome to the Stress Factory. It's going to be an amazing show. And please welcome to the show. You've seen him on Letterman. You've seen him on uh, Todd Barry. And then he comes out. He's like, how's everybody doing? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it definitely takes like five minutes to get into it again. Because Dan's right. It's like, you just now you just want to hear more. You want to hear that song again. Well, there, there was like, like we did, a, there was a show at the cellar. And I don't know how it happened, but they were playing like, like um, I think Cypher Sounds was having Red at the piano playing like uh, Don't Stop Believing and everybody was singing along. And I'm like, this is great. It's hard <laughs> to follow. Thinking, yes. I it's, 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 a stupid comedy show. it's difficult. Well, that's why I like to mix it up and I like to have comedy and that's music, how we feel because we're comics and comedy yeah. is not special to us as it might it's be. A, it's, yeah, it's enough with it already. Uh, have, Dave, have you been have you seen there's a movie channel that's been showing Godfather one and two like yes, on, on we're watching movie. it nonstop. Nonstop. Yep. Yeah, Cinemax, I think, or Showtime. <laughs> yeah, one yeah, of those. And they've also had the third one on, which I I know watch a little, but I yeah, I, he's he's trying to dress that one up. They changed the name. It's called yeah. like the death of Michael Corleone. Yeah, and it works yeah. too because I, I keep falling for it, and then I'm like, wait, no, I don't want to see this, and it's so bad, and yet 
because he changed it. And I almost want to see it from the beginning, but he says it's better. But <laughs> it can't be right. It's just there, so awful. A couple of things. Cause I, I've, obviously I love, love the, the first two. Uh, a couple of things jumped out at me watching it this time that I hadn't really noticed before. Like when Sonny it gets shot and then Robert Duvall has to tell Marlon Brando that Sonny got shot. Yeah. But you needed a but, drink first. Yeah. Right. Right. But he says this yeah. weird thing. He goes, he goes, Sonny, they shot Sonny on the causeway. Mm -hmm. He's right. dead. It's like, if I were Brando, I would have been like, and you know, and what is a causeway? Is that like over water? Is well, that I, like a I, that's a Long Island thing. Cause it's a, you know, I, see, we all knew what that was from see, here. You know, for me, there was a lot, there were questions. Right. About they should have said the way. turnpike for yeah, you. And you would have understood. Causeway. Where are you right. from? I'm from outside Boston. There's no causeways up that way? No, that's a Long Island thing. Is it, I yeah. thought causeway was just a term that just was a term. No, no, no. There's point. actually, it's called like the Robert Moses Causeway or something like that. It's That's one of the names of the highways back then. I <laughs> uh, My favorite part is that like, uh, you know, they have somebody following. So we, we, we were making fun of it in our readings and changing the dialogue and they're following to when he gets shot, but they're, they're, they're like so far behind him. So far. You know, <laughs> that we have the two guys, like it's me and Mateo. And we're just like, well, you were the one that wanted to stop for lunch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's for an egg, for an egg cream. I, I know. I just want to do it again when I was watching and I'm like, we got to just do it again. Cause we really right, Colin. I mean, it was super it fun. Was so right? fu it was so fun. It's, yeah, and it's, it's just, you know, we have that theme where he's just like, uh, you know, and, and at that meeting, you'll be assassinated. And then Dan's like, excuse me, you know, like the most <laughs> obvious of all like, responses. Like, I thought it, was, it, was, it was a little rude that when uh, Michael starts coming into his own and he's protecting his dad at the hospital. Remember? Yeah, but he's, he's just bossing around that nurse. Yeah, and he, but he also stands outside with, you know, Enzo. Enzo he, the big. So they can look like gunmen. But there's a yeah. moment before when he he takes Enzo's bouquet and just chucks it. <laughs> <He> just <laughs> like, it I, could, I could only picture well, Enzo's Enzo's dad like, "Did you give him the flowers?" <laughs> dad, I'm pretty tried. sure we we did something with that. Like I think you know whoever was playing that. Hey, I paid a lot of money for those. You know, so we definitely addressed it. All that kind of stuff. We had a good. I'll send you the script one day. You might like it. I'd love to see that. Uh, all right, let's uh, go to the uh, screen. We have a lot to talk about today on this Star Wars themed show. Let's see what we've got here. We open with a little bit of news items. This is Biden's first uh, con address to Congress. As you can see, the turnout oh, that's is unbelievable. Like, that's, like, that's like me at Gladys's. <laughs> I know it's uh, it's not, you gotta feel bad. It's like, you, boy, everybody's so excited that I'm present. Oh, I guess they're not, um, <laughs> I feel bad for him. And this, I wonder, this is uh, a pink moon, a pink super moon. It was a picture in Paris. This was last week. Yeah. Alec, do you know where I'm going to go with this next photo, which is so obvious to you and me, I would feel. E.T.? Well, e e oh. I, I was going to say Batman. Yeah. yeah. yeah I feel yeah, like that was the most it. obvious. Like, it just looks totally like it. it needed I know the there. Eiffel Tower kind of ruins the Gotham effect for me. But. I, I suppose it does. <laughs> This is the uh, SpaceX capsule, do capsule docking at the International Space Station where these men clearly haven't seen a woman in many, many months. <laughs> oh, a lot, lot of khaki. No COVID protocol. A lot of khaki boners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving out vaccines at the Museum of Natural History, and now I'm angry that I got it at the boring Javits Center. Should have waited it out. I mean, this would be exciting. Is that a Band-Aid on the, on, the, on the whale? That's certainly yeah. what it looks like. <clears throat> oh, maybe that's the joke. You mean it, the vaccinated. whale getting a vaccination? Yeah, the whale just got vaccinated. That's right. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's good. <laughs> yeah, good that for them. Been all right. Good for them. And this, oh, what a burn. New York City public schools will have remote learning instead of snow days next school year. Oh, oh that burn. Is awesome. <laughs> oh, that oh, sucks. The worst thing to happen to children in psych. many, many years. Well, I mean, we used to have to make those snow days up anyway, but for some reason, we still wanted those snow days. Of course. Yeah. Snow yeah. days mean you don't have to do anything. Now you're going to, it's a but, snow but, day, but. And, and the days that you made up at the end of the year were days that you weren't doing much, any, like that extra snow day, you it was 
by the time the end of June rolled around, it was already like you were just goofing off. It's so day. ridiculous. Exactly. Making up those snow days so you can hit because it's very nobody's going to Harvard if you don't have that 120 second day. <laughs> it's, it's so pathetic. And as well, we said parents before, hate, parents, parents hate snow days. Yeah, they do, I guess. Probably. We wouldn't know. I, I, like I only know, know that because on Facebook, every I didn't know that before social media, but then every snow day now, parents are complaining about, parents apparently don't like hanging out with their kids. That's what, what I learned. From <laughs> apparently. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Bill and Melinda Gates, I assume, Dan, you are also on this. I immediately uh, tried to get in contact with Melinda. Uh, Dan and I are going to try and make this happen. Uh, seems well, like the right move. To go out with, to go out with her. Bring your periwinkle sweater. Apparently, that's the key. <laughs> I hey, know. If, you wanted, I mean, if you wanted to date for money, you've had opportunities to do that, I think. Do you really think so? Hard. Yeah, but this is serious money. This isn't <laughs> not fooling not around level, money. Not with that level of money. This but... isn't just Alex Sulkin money. You know, this is uh, <laughs> some Microsoft money. <laughs> Did you guys see this? The in uh, what, what do you call it? Dutch? Uh, Netherlands, I guess. Netherlands, yeah. yeah. The first mm -hmm. 3D printed house. Wow. It took five days to print. You see, this is for real. That's cool. Wow. Alec? I mean, it looks like an old printer, yeah. What does it look like? An old printer. Well, what do you think the house looks like? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's the... Oh, man, it <laughs> works. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it doesn't really, but well, okay. It's similar. <laughs> it's a little it's bit. A it's, got a, it, it's got a little bit of the tattooing architecture style to it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more mid-century tattooing. <laughs> a long, a long century ago, though. Oh, right. So this is Thunderball, Thunderball. right? James Bond with the jetpack. We're all obsessed with jetpacks. We know Alec is because they've used it multiple times. Yes, on Family Guy. This is this is a hilarious one. I forgot to take the chase off. And of course, the Mort Goldman Menorah jetpack. Sure, sure. <laughs> But, uh, oh, and this, of course, is the epic fail jetpack. How can you show this? Eh. <laughs> epic fail jetpack. I mean, Alec, it's already on YouTube, so. I know, that, that's a very you know. good scene, by the way. It's a classic, but here's the thing. In Britain, yeah, the British Navy actually last week they actually invented a real one. <laughs> yes, I'm premier. It is real, and I'm premiering real, Colin's new song while we do it. I'm, this is Colin's new song, "The Tree." Also, it, it seemed to go well. <laughs> Colin's Wait, new Colin, song. Colin, that's you. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Oh boy, yeah. So the ladies are just throwing themselves at you. <laughs> oh yeah, look at them. Yeah. I mean, um, but also, week. what an advancement in war! How hard is it to hit yeah. the guys slowly floating towards you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> hit that guy! Hit that guy who's laden with a thousand pounds of mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> right and once he hits the dirt like get him while he's taking off his thousand pound thing right yeah. uh colin why is her name la freak that's her kind of uh uh her character that she kind of represents she feels more comfortable in this character that she kind of yeah represents her music this is not by the way to be confused with la la chic. Trees. La chic. Oh, I'm, well not that the trees which is a song by rush yeah. Yes. Oh, right. Uh, nice. There was trouble. A, there was trouble in the forest. It is a song about a sort of a, a dispute between the the oaks and the maples. Mm -hmm. Oh God, That's, damn! Uh, so you're Alec, that in the rush, huh? Alec, there was uh, <laughs> a classic to Rush in college, and you know, Rush fans, being Rush fans, they insist that every Rush song is incredible. You cannot yeah. tell that. Well, they do it on Family Guy a lot, like when you had the cheesy Cheetos talk about Neil Pert while he's doing yep. lines. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I Neil mean, Peart is the greatest drummer of all time. <laughs> he was very good. He was yeah. very good. R.I.P. By the way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, you know oh. who this is? Do I? Yeah. No. I guess it's that little guy. Is that yes. is that is that Halle Joel Osment? <laughs> 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 no, it's uh, 
Felix Silla, he just died uh, a couple, like maybe last week, two weeks ago, tops. He was uh, Twiggy in Buck yeah. Rogers. Oh. Me too. Hiya, Buck. He didn't do the voice, but uh, he was in the right. costume. Oh, okay. This guy worked for years. This was, I like when they have the pictures and he, you know, I guess he's in that costume, I, yeah. <laughs> but he, he signed it anyway. <laughs> um, uh, I only put this one. This isn't him. This is Kenny Baker. And I think Alec, this is David Prowse, right? Yeah. I guess. No. Yeah. Wait, David Prowse no, is no, the no, guy no, who played that's, Darth that's, Vader. That's, that's the other Peter guy who played Mayhew. Chewbacca. That's Peter oh, that's Peter Mayhew. Mayhew. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Chewbacca. Yeah. Right. David Prowse play, was in the Darth Vader yes. costume. And this is Peter Mayhew. You're right. It's Chewbacca. I, I like when they're out of costume. What are you saying, Dan? Anakin Skywalker was not the same guy as the guy that was normally in the Darth Vader costume, I'm guessing. No. No, that was David Prowse. Well, David Prowse was, was Anakin Skywalker. No. Well, and yeah, also- technically, technically, yes, but yeah. But, but when they took Vader's mask off and Revenge of the Oh, Death, see, that's, that's the question, Vader. Alec. Do you know that's not David Prowse when they take the mask off, right? No. That's uh, uh, Sir Reginald Tilton. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know the name. <laughs> <laughs> I totally was by that. I assumed he would know. <laughs> yeah, we always wonder, because I, like, I feel bad for David Prowse. They finally take his helmet. The guy's been in three movies, and then he's like, wait, we're not, you're not using me? <laughs> the the hologram is Sebastian Shaw. Oh, Sebastian! No, the hologram. But what about? Is that the same when they take off his helmet? Yeah, he goes, yeah, it's the same guy. <clears throat> oh, the same guy. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, who, who, I like when they're that? when they're out of uh, costume, just halfway. I like, yeah, Anthony Daniels. Is that what you said, Dan? No, I didn't say that. Oh. I'm sorry. Anthony Daniels looks a bit like Dustin Hoffman from the side totally. there, like the graduate era Dustin Hoffman. I think he looks more like David Norton. <clears throat> oh, he does yeah. look like David Norton. David I'm Norton. a pepper, you're a pepper. Oh, exactly. Okay. What, what was David making it? Yeah, making it. <laughs> making this it. time around, I'm making it. Come on. <laughs> no more, no more faking it. <laughs> I think he's more known for the Dr. Pepper. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Also, well, I don't know. American Making World- it's pretty good. That's for meatballs. American yeah. Werewolf in London was his other. Right. <laughs> uh, this is the Felix uh, who just died. He was cousin it in the Adams family. Oh my God. This is no joke. Jesus. I didn't even know anybody was in that costume. Did you guys ever watch that uh, uh, HBO show Life's Too Short? Oh my God. Warwick yes, with uh, mm-hmm. Warwick Davis. Warwick Davis. That was yeah, great. Yeah. The Ricky Gervais one, right? Yes. So funny. Mm-hmm. That's there was a scene in there where he had to be a stand-in for a small child, <laughs> like d- dressed in sort of Victorian garb, and and it was just for Helena Bonham Carter's reaction shots, and so he had to just stand there. But she was freaked out by him, so they put him in a garbage barrel and just drew a face on the garbage barrel. Uh, I remember that because Johnny Depp was in that one too, right? I th- I think so. That was the know. second one. Yeah, I, I I remember how much I liked it because they had this one scene in one of the episodes where he is he, he was getting divorced from his wife and she had something he wanted on the top of the shelf and he remember yeah. he had to go up and get it. She goes, "I'll get it." He goes, "No, no, I can do it." I mean, they just really went for all the short jokes. It was great. It, was, it great. was great that he was on board with it. This look at this guy, Felix Silla. He was he, in all the stuff we know as kids. Well, what's that? What's that? that is that Star uh, Trek? Star Trek. Okay. I mean, everybody. This is the pilot for Star Trek. Wait, these these two people. I mean, their faces look like other people. Like the guy on the left looks like Tony Randall. Totally it does. And, and the but guy. No, on that's the, the guy. Yeah. And the, yeah. but the guy on the right looks either like Bing Crosby or. Ooh, you're right. Or a little Grand Moff Tarkin here on May the 4th. Who? Grand mm-hmm. Moff Tarkin. Well, a big, yeah, larger, have a larger headed, obviously, version. But Yes. <laughs> although, although Tarkin had a fair amount of forehead, I think, if memory serves. He did. He did. His hair I was I don't know who that head. is. Yeah, you do from Star Wars. He was the guy who was like Vader's right-hand man, the British guy. Oh, like Peter the Cushing? Guy Vader yeah. suffocated and... Peter Cushing. Oh, it was Peter Cushing. In a way... You've decided the fate by right. Is that that's the guy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who was the guy that Vader choked uh, telepathically? Yeah, not telekinetically. Yes, that was in the Darkin? second one, though, right? No, no, that was just some random like nostril yeah. flary guy. I like. I, I will give the general. I will. I will give the uh, 
what's the, I will give Lord Vader the news right away. <laughs> and then yeah. you know he's right. Um, this is also Felix Hilly. He was the uh, no. flying Ewok. Yeah. Wow. This guy had a hell of a career, let alone my favorite show of all time, H.R. Puffin Stuff. Yeah. Which, by the way, this, you all remember this scene, or this is the redesigned mm -hmm. scene. Moon in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, that's the new, new version. The new version, yeah. yes. However, I believe that this is ripped off from the ending of HR. It's by the name of HR Puffin Stuff. When you go when things get rough, HR Puffin Stuff. You can't do it little cause you can't do enough. Here's the part and the music too. <laughs> I mean, the guy on the drums, the yeah. bird-like lips, so and the good. music is very similar. So that's why if they come at us, we'll be like, well, Luke has ripped off the ending to yeah. Puppet stuff anyway, so. Yeah, go get them. Yeah, and and here's the best part. My, here's my favorite thing, which I want to do for the if I ever get a show. Woo! I got you got everybody you got. Someone who cares by the name of... I'm gonna fast forward. Well, you can't do a little cause you can't do enough. See you next week. I sure hope so. That's the part I always want to do in a show. See you next week, everybody. <laughs> That's my favorite show. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Oh my god. That's always been my favorite part. Show show intros and outros used to be so much longer and, and worse. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, they, they don't have theme songs anymore. I was just discussing. They don't bother because they're on every week. The Big Bang Theory is the only one and Friends that continues to. And the yeah, Big Friends Bang is, Theory is the Friends, best Friends is not on anymore. You know that, right? What? No, don't don't say that to Dave. Oh, okay. God, like, what do you? Oh, oh shit. Now you fucked up a little the, bit. There. Oh, that's fucked. Are you, are you upset? Oh, there he is. That's the guy. Matter, a, a one man laugh factory. Woohoo. <laughs> Now, this is Dan's show, and it's called Live from the Table. And this is the one with uh, Isaac from the Love Boat. Oh. Ted, what's his name? Ted uh, Lang. Or Lang. Lang. Ted Lang. Dan, do you want to explain to our friend Alec what happened that day when you had Ted Lang on? Well, I think I told Perry Ella, producer, make sure he, he knows we want to discuss the Love Boat. And she's like, yeah, you know, obviously you're going to discuss the love boat. So he comes on and completely does not want to discuss the love boat. Oh my God. He's talking about everything but the love boat. You believe this guy? He wants to talk about his new virtual play. He had, he had a, um, he had like some, something on YouTube, some Shakespeare thing that he wanted us to. He, I, you know, I hit the, I hit the ceiling when I, when Dan told me this, I couldn't even believe it. Oh my God. And then he berated us because we didn't watch it, and, you know. Yeah, he, yeah, he was mad. Like, wait, you didn't see my YouTube special? <laughs> oh, made me so angry. This is Alex's show, of course. But you know, you got you, the, the lesson is is you got to make. I once did a did a podcast with Henry Winkler, and I was told that we could only discuss his new book about fishing. He didn't, you couldn't even talk about uh, the new sh Barry, right? You can't even talk about Barry. Oh, this was before Barry. This was oh, like. Oh. And, and that's um, unacceptable. What's the matter with people? You know, and I was cares? like, well, why are we having him on? Like I was with Danny Lobel and he's like, well, it's still it's, it's still a, what you know, you should. I mean, well, it's, it's so positive. obvious you, you talk about the past, but then you talk about your new stuff. That's what you do. He didn't want anything to do with happy. Day. Uh, we were told no happy. I don't day. want to hear that about Henry Winkler. He's the coolest. <laughs> this is uh, Alex show. It's uh, called Family Guy. It's apparently big with the young kids. Uh, it also has you. a nice theme song. <laughs> this is uh, where Alec and I became very best friends because when I found out he was this character in the something, something dark side, it was my favorite on the ice planet of Hoth. He's the guy that goes, Hey, just anybody need any ice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. and, and before I knew Alec was the voice, I'm like, Hey, you know what my favorite part in that was when I found, I knew he was uh, the writer and producer. I said, my favorite is when that guy comes with the ice. He goes, that's me. <laughs> and I think it's his your only line in that episode, right? Oh yeah. Yep. What are the odds? I'm gonna find you. Do the how only many, line is my favorite one. How many takes did you have to do to get the right? To get it right? <laughs> oh, to get that right? Uh, you know what? Make I mean, you do for that line. I, I'm usually uh, 
pretty in and out with that stuff because most of any of the voices that I ever have to do on the show are just my own voice. Like this one? Right. Where you play Jesus? That's right. The record so, store, which it's, is, al it's always just my voice. This is my favorite, too, because not only was this a great episode, but uh, I love that the, the Pink Floyd and the Van Halen guitar. I like all the stuff in the in the background. You never get to see when it's moving. That's yeah, it's great, great artwork, too, you know. But yeah, Alec plays Jesus on the show, which is awesome. But Alec, can I just a quick question, though? They, they don't want like different options, you know, like just they want to have a bunch of possibilities when you do the line. Just so well, I think. Talk. I think what probably happened with, with, in particular with the ice thing, it's usually like if we're in the writer's room and maybe I would, I think I pitched that line about a guy coming around and saying like, hey, anybody need any ice? Like feeling like really. Uh, and so Seth has this policy of like, if a writer pitches a joke and they kind of nail how it should be delivered, then he'll just have them go record it. And so then all you have to do is just say it exactly like you said it for him once before. So it kind of eliminates the need for like, oh, hey, give this to me like a few different ways. Yeah, plus, it, let's just say you're not an actor. The fact of the matter is you've been oh. working on this show a long time. You know how, you know, th you, they know how this works. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> you guys know the, the way the cadence it's supposed to have because, you know, you've been working on way too long. That Well, and also it's just Seth is sitting there and if, if it makes him laugh, then we're like, okay, we, you know, that's, that's what we'll go with. Right. Does he still have his boarding pass from 9-11? I don't know. I would imagine he does. He has a, uh, an oddly, like, I remember when it was 9-11 one year, maybe like, you know, 2008 or nine. And he, he was in there at work and I said, Hey, you, you feeling lucky today? And he was like, why? I'm like, nine because 9-11 and you, you almost made that flight. He was like, Oh yeah. Right. Like he, he sort of was not, if it were me, I'd be like, you know, thinking about it nonstop. But I think he, did he kind of did he get to the airport and missed the flight or he just slept overslept and never got to the airport. No, he was at the gate when the plane was there. He had the boarding pass. Yes. And he was doing the whole thing of don't you know who I am? Like, let me on the flight. And they, you know, luckily they didn't. Their policy was it was, you know, before within 10 minutes of when the flight was supposed to take off. So he missed it by like five minutes. That is oh, a wow. crazy Shit. fucking thing. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I know. I know. God, I would have like no money. I would. Uh, I love that episode where uh, Brian goes back in time and he knows about 9-11 and he's on the plane and he and he comes up with catchphrases when he beats up the uh, terrorists. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. Alec posted this about a month ago. Top five songs written for 80s movies. And I couldn't think of another. I think you hit them all. No, but you got to I, I excluded Kenny Loggins. So he's got he's got to have I was it was pointed out many times. You're right. That Caddyshack. He, well, there's like I think about it. There's like Danger Zone. Top and, Gun. Right. Right. What yeah. about um, somebody what who was, made Jackson Brown for Fast Time? But did he write that for the movie? I don't know if he did or he didn't. But that's there's right. Also well, I don't know whether it was written for the that, movie. There's also a song in that movie called Love. Yeah, Ooh. but that's not written for the movie. Okay. That's Amy Heckerling. I talked to her and she just picked out one she liked and that she was also told which ones to use. Um, somebody's baby sounds what like about power of love. Power of love is on there. It's on what there. Huey Lewis there. It's on there. Read the oh, list. It it's only five long. <laughs> Colin, what the hell's Shit, the matter with you? I'm insane. <laughs> Wait, I came up with. The, oh, I, what about Ghostbusters? <laughs> I'm insane. Oh, yeah, Ghostbusters. But, oh but, God, but I wouldn't take anything off. No, the that top wasn't five. written for the movie. <laughs> I, I wouldn't Buster's take anything. not written for the movie. I think you hit the exact <laughs> no. top five. Oh, well, thank you. What about The Heat Is That's On? That's a good I one. I like that one. That's a good one. Oh, I like that yeah. one, too. But he put Beverly Hills Cop in there, so you had to choose one, I guess. But uh, this is Alec is now on Cameo. Oh, I love that you put this out. Can I, oh, can yeah. I throw another possibility out there? Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Let the River Run from Working Girl. That's a good one. Very yeah. good. Or Duran Duran uh, from the James Bond, uh, View to a Kill. Yeah. View to a Kill. But That's I still think Alec hit the main ones that we love about 80s yeah, movies. I, I think so. I, I yeah. like the list. That's why I put it up. But uh, Alec is now on. Except Cameo. for Power of Love. I don't know why you didn't put that on. I'm sorry. Next time. <laughs> uh, I love that. I, there's no way that I put dads on there. Like somebody else did that. I, I didn't. I didn't Photoshop this. That's hilarious. <laughs> Maybe it's trying to say you are a dad, even though I know you produced the show dads. But right. Why would you put that on? I don't that think on? so. I, I don't thought think you did it as a gag. 
I wish. But uh, yes, you can. Uh, you can. Uh, available to, for right. Available for bar mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs, and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, finally, this was. Uh, this is a thing in Lincoln, Nebraska, where they had everybody who was named Josh battle each other because it's a stupid town. And this is what they did. But it's funny where you see guys dressed up in some Star Wars. Maybe that's Chewbacca and Spider-Man. It reminds me of Annie Hall when he's going through L.A. And he goes, the architecture is really consistent. French next to Spanish, next to Duda, <laughs> next to Japanese. That's the first thing I thought of when I saw this ridiculous thing of all the Joshes in Lincoln, Nebraska, battling each other. It's stupid it and funny. At the it same was time. cute. They let a little like four year old kid win. Right. Oh, is that true? I, I didn't know the outcome. <laughs> yeah, I think I like a, some four-year-old kid one. And uh, but this is the last photo of the day from Corvette Summer. Our boy Mark Hamill with an unknown Annie Potts at the time. Oh, Corvette Potts. Summer, everybody's favorite second Mark Hamill movie. <laughs> but when did that come out? Before uh, Star Wars? After seventy-eight. Uh, right after he filmed it, af before Star Wars came out, because nobody knew. Star Wars was going to be huge. And uh, then it made a lot of money. It cost, they said it cost $9 million to make and it made like $30 million or something, which was, you know, ridiculous for a movie like this. But it's a classic now because Mark Hamill is the shit. And everybody knows it, right? Alan? Mark Hamill yeah. never did other. Once Star Wars became what it became, Mark Hamill was locked into that. He could, he didn't break out of it. Never. It's weird that he couldn't. Carrie Fisher finally, I guess, broke out a couple times, and Woody well, Allen, and uh, you know. Well, he also uh, crashed his car and ruined his face. That's true. Right, but that, but that, you know, Harrison Ford has a scar, and yet he was doing well, all a whole bunch of other a stuff. Different, a little different. Harrison Meanwhile, Ford. I'm just glad that Mark Hamill made, you know, uh, made the voiceover stuff he does with the Joker and the Trickster and all that kind of stuff. It makes me very happy. Because yeah. uh, I think Alec feels the same way. There's something about Mark Hamill that we will worship for the rest of our lives. Like the day when uh, you and I were at this restaurant together and you pulled out the Christopher Reeve picture in your wallet, which made me so happy because I feel the exact same way about him. He meant so yeah. much to me as a kid. And his performance great. is the greatest that Superman will ever be. And nobody can compare because they just don't seem to have the, I don't know, the joyfulness that, he bought to the character and the totally and the agree. comedy and the comedy <clears throat> was Agreed. brilliant yeah he was a better actor yeah um okay well now it is time for colin to play what i've been waiting for i cannot i'm very excited can i okay. can i tell everybody what you're going to play colin sure 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 it is david bowie's star man oh the perfect right. day for star wars day i'm very excited about it we talked okay. about it today here it is. All right. Awesome. Here we go, a little reverb. All right. Um... You 
That's one of my favorite songs of all time. Great. great. That was nice. great, Colin. Thank you. Colin. Thanks for the suggestion, Dave. Yeah, you're welcome. Colin is yeah. back. Colin and the owner of the Comedy Cellar, Gnome, have a little band. That sounded uh, disrespectful. Sorry, they have a band. No, that's and fine. they were, before COVID, they were playing uh, every weekend at the Comedy Cellar. And they just started again last night. They will be there on Monday nights mm -hmm. at the Olive Tree. Yeah, I always think I'm going to say the Olive Garden, the Olive Tree upstairs on Monday nights. Uh, the times, I guess, will change right now. They're there at nine o'clock. Colin and Gnome. So you can see songs such as these. If you come down, if you're in New York City to the Comedy Cellar on Monday nights, they're back. And sometimes they even let me sing with them, which is a high honor. What do you sing, uh, uh, David, when you sing with them? What, what song uh, I don't know. So we have to find a song that they know and one where I can find the lyrics. We know I'm all really the bad songs. At remembering. Uh, what we know all the songs well no i know you guys know the songs right i have to know the song so yeah, the, yeah. the first time i did i, I had sing. Just saw um, on youtube uh bruce springsteen doing uh when the saints go marching in with like some group of uh new orleans musicians it was amazing that sounds horrible but uh you know i uh, <laughs> never liked uh, i don't care for the boss but uh in fact no, you're uh, from I'm, jersey how do you know yeah, i don't care about? well on the contrary the first time i sang with these guys i sang living on a prayer so there where's where my allegiance lies so there you go that's a big jersey like turf war uh also while you were playing we got a donation from free speech network which is very kind. They also want to know what happened with Bobby Kelly and Kevin Brennan this week at the club. <laughs> it's a good, yeah. What did happen? Some, Please do. I don't that. know. Some nonsense Dan, was happening. Don, you know what uh, happened. I was in the room, but then they kind of moved. I, I think what happened was Kevin was filming Robert and Robert, like <laughs> without asking Robert and Robert. So I just heard Robert like, what are you, TMZ? You fucking TMZ? That's all I really heard. Right. He goes, you're filming me? And yeah, you want to film me? Ask me, you know, something like that. Yeah, and Kevin loves causing the trouble, so he certainly you know. does. <laughs> Something. I mean, that that's what I was able to overhear, but I don't know. Anyway, thank you, uh, Free Speech. I appreciate the donation, and Colin does a great job. Alex Sulkin on Cameo, and uh -oh. of course, Family Guy on Sunday. Do you have anything else? Uh, I'm working on a podcast with our friend uh, uh, John Goldblatt, Julius Sharp. I don't know if you know him. He's funny dude so it's has no name yet it's formless but you know it's about time that two jewish middle-aged men did a podcast it is I mean, right uh no, so wait uh what would it be i mean what is going to be the topic i mean I'd i mean curious. it's there's a there's a famous very good podcast called script notes it's by these two screenwriters who like kind of help you and help make you you know say like hey do it this way do it that way and it's very touchy feely and warm and we want to do sort of the antidote to that where it's sort of like writers who hate writing and this is why you stink and don't do oh, it and people that are gonna love that that's awesome that's yeah great Brian that's Koppelman great could, could he, he's like kind of a cantankerous guy brian, who? Koppelman. Who? brian oh. koppelman oh koppelman yeah is he is he like the uh, he seems like someone who would do something like that he seems like he might be a good guest or something you know yeah okay I don't, you Dan, know, you what, what I, Dan, you're not performing anywhere. 
that I can find. I, mean, uh, <laughs> I'm, well, sure, I, I'm assume you're I, coming back. I'll be, no, well, I, I was at the comedy cellar. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, those are week to week bookings. So I'll, I'm, I assume I'll be there this weekend. Yeah. And of course, you can always see Dan at the comedy cellar. You can look up the uh, lineup online, of course, and of course, live from uh, the table which he uh, does every week right here on YouTube and on Sirius XM with Noam Dorman, who also performs with Tom Smith. Smith. So as uh, I said, the Comedy Cellar is wide open for business. I'm not sure to what capacity yet right now. I still think it's 33%, but it'll change a couple weeks. Next week, I believe we have Liza Minnelli uh, coming on. Fantastic. <laughs> That ought to be interesting. And uh, in two weeks, uh, we were uh, lucky enough to get musician and comedian Jackie Tone will be joining us. Mm. And uh, we will keep you posted on what is happening in the next couple of weeks. But remember also, the Comedy Danny, Cellar. What did you say, Danny? Well, Jackie Tone also had a role in that. Glow. 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 Glow That's right. Yeah. She's also from Glow. Mm. So, uh, yes. Uh, anyway, the Comedy Cellar is open for business. Uh, they have five or six shows a night, four different rooms. So please come down if you are in New York City. Otherwise, watch our show every Tuesday at 7. And uh, thank you very much for joining.